What is going on YouTube? One on the XRM here and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. We're going over cameras and how it went from the GoPros to the Sony and now to the main camera that I have, the Canon R5. There's a lot of steps in between. I'm gonna go over some pros and cons of each camera. Come along, it's gonna be a fun video. There's a lot of information and more importantly, I'm an amateur. If you're an amateur as well, at the end I'll add the people and the channels that I really followed that helped make the decision that led to this. So let's go. We're gonna go now into the pros and cons of the GoPro, the Sony, and then the Canon. Yes, the Canon does have some downsides. For the GoPro, it's very robust. You can take it anywhere, it's super small, and it's, it's easy to mount anywhere with minimal effort. The Hyper Smooth that's on the sevens I think's great. I know that the tens are even better. I don't know. I don't think I need to go to the ten. Also, the seven has a detachable lens, so you can put um, if you want to put an ND filter or something like that. You can and it makes it a lot easier. Or a polarizer, same thing helps helps keep the glare down. Especially you know, we use that here in Arizona because it's always sunny. But with all those good things, and also the editing of GoPros are. Is, easy on the software that you have it's not a heavy file so it's very easy to go through even at 4k now some of the things that i found the reasons why i left when i didn't leave it but isn't my primary camera is because some of the shots i wanted to do you really just couldn't get the types of pans the 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 bokeh in the background really the depth of field which is the same thing um and i found that when I would do a review with something, like I'd go to a dealership or something like that, and all I had was a GoPro, you actually get looked at differently. You're not seen as professional in a sense, even though I'm not professional, but the whole thing is perception and how much they'll allow you to test out their vehicles with the way you look. GoPro, unfortunately, just didn't cut it. Um, I did actually do a video with, um, Luxury Auto Collections, that was the R8 video. That was with the GoPro, and it actually had an audio issue because of the GoPro. So I found that I needed to upgrade, and that's where we went to Sony. Pros and cons of the Sony, real quick. Pros, 4K30, great video, very easy to use. It is small enough and easy enough uh, to operate, especially if you're in a car or something like that, like if you're handheld in a car, it's, it's easy. Mounting in your window in a car, is, is very simple because it is lighter. Granted, you know, mounting this R7, it's got some weight to it, so you kind of you're like, eh, get a heavy camera sticking open as a fall. Um, so there's a little less fear with this. And the settings, they're not over the top difficult. Um, something I will say about Sony's uh, menu system is they are convoluted. There's a lot in them and they're not as intuitive as you would like. So that's kind of a con. They don't quite make it easy on you. Like there's some settings in there that are hidden. You don't have to go through it. Again, Film Alliance, check them out. He'll show you those hidden uh, menus and how to really set things up. But it takes an in-depth review to really make sure you understand what's going on in the Sony. And, and that's really true with most other Sonys that I've used. That and the lack of a touch screen, that kind of can has gotten, that kind of dig it. It makes things so simple. Another downside is it heats up. Um, the Sony out here in Arizona, I was having issues with 85, 90 degrees outside, even not in the sun, like in the shade. It would overheat on me a lot when I was trying to do reviews of a few motorcycles. And I was finding that I literally had to put the camera in my freezer to cool it off. And I know it's bad because I can get condensation on the lens, but I, I was trying to get this done because I was barring somebody else's vehicle. So I wanted to not you know, take all day. So it took an hour and a half of shooting and made it almost three hours because of the overheating issue that I have. GoPros, you don't have that issue. I, I think I've overheated a few times, but that's because I put it by an exhaust of a car or something in a very hot spot. So generally GoPros aren't gonna have that issue. At 30 frames a second, you can't slow or down or speed up your content. So I would have to shoot my B-roll on the GoPro. And again, my color grading with the GoPro is annoying I didn't want to keep doing all my B-roll with the GoPro. So we stepped to the can now. The Sony was great. It did what I needed for a while, but I wanted to do more. And uh, again, the pictures were a huge selling point because most of my videos, 
I'd have to do the thumbnail somehow, right? So I would want to take a picture. Granted, my cell phone takes pretty decent pictures. The Samsung S21 Ultra it takes fine pictures, but I wanted to kick it up another level because when you really shrink them down, uh, I wanted to keep a lot of the detail and a, a 45 megapixel sensor allows you so much cropping. When you want, say you take something far away, you can crop in like 80% and or over 100%. And it's just, it's still clear, it's fantastic. So I got this camera because it can shoot 4K 60 and that I can use as my B-roll. I can put it on a gimbal and make it just really smooth and, and cinematic or I can go down to the 4K 30 like this. So really it's just one camera I got to use. Granted on the motorcycle, I'll still use the GoPros. I'll still keep the Sony with me as a, as a number two camera, but the 4K 60 is what I want to dial in the most. There's a setting in here that's actually really cool where it's um, high quality 4K, which is again that 8K oversampled to 4K and it's just incredible. All of that greatness, there are some downsides. Uh, like the Sony, it's been known to overheat and that is something that a uh, software update, like being this has the most recent firmware, it, it helps. Uh, I haven't actually ran into it and I found that it's because I turn on and off the camera a bunch. I can really play with whether or not the thing overheats. I've shot a few B-rolls outside in the sun um, past week or two, so it hasn't, I haven't had too many issues with that. Um, because this thing shoots 8K, you need a memory card that is fast enough to read all of that information as quickly as it brings it in. And in order to do that, you need a CF Express card. If you don't know what a CF Express card, go look it up. Uh, but for a for one that's enough memory storage, it's around $280 and then they go up from there. So an investment in memory cards is, is going to be a huge point for the Canon because in order to utilize all of its fantastic features, you need that card. Might be, is definitely a con because it's just extra stuff you need. Um, you also need a UHS-2 SD card because again, it needs those write speeds. Granted, you can't do the AK, but you can shoot uh, your pictures and everything on that um, UHS-2 card, which is pretty good. Now for the other <laughs> downside, Actually, there's, I'm gonna go over two more downsides. So this is gonna sound like, why did you get this camera at all? <laughs> One, you need lenses. And full size lenses, Canon lenses are not cheap. Granted, this kit came with a 24 by 105 millimeter lens. It is around $1,200 as a package. So it brought the cost from 38 to 42-ish. 52, 5200. Um, and then we got a 100 to 400 uh, telephoto lens that was 600 bucks. So the lenses are definitely expensive. I mean, that one lens is more than the two GoPros that I have. So that'll let you know that there's going to be another investment of lenses. Also, as I mentioned, this has a massive file because of the AK or, or the 45 megapixel sensor. So there's a ton of data. Well, in order to work on the freaking footage, you have to have an operating system that can handle it. I had to upgrade my computer to get to handle it and it still doesn't do well with AK. I proxy everything in that AK that's oversampled, that really high quality 4K that you can use as a setting, that bogs down like crazy. So for color grading, I actually have to do the setting they have now, which is just a, the 4K 30, standard um and i would color grade that get what i wanted and if i did a clip that was the higher resolution i would just paste those attributes onto it so you, it's sort of hard to work with if you don't have a computer and operating system that's fast enough and strong enough to handle the very large data files that the canon has so when you're thinking about these cameras really think about the systems you have to put your content together. Here I'm gonna share with you some of the people that I follow that really, really understand these cameras that can help you get the most out of them. So again, first and foremost, Film Alliance, he is everything Sony ZV-1 and Sony ZV-E10. 
can teach you so much. The other guy that I use for pictures and I actually have two or three of his LUTs packages for my Lightroom for my photos is Peter McKinnon. Peter McKinnon is very fun to watch, massive YouTube. He's got like 5 million subscribers. So I mean, just search him, you'll find him. Very fun, really great content. And it has a very unique style when he edits his photos. So it'll help you do the same thing along with your, your, your videos to kind of grade them to make them you're really your own. The next person is Chris Howell, H-A-U. He really goes over the gear that goes into shooting something. So if you're curious about, you know, different gimbals and how to really operate them, I mean, he's got a fun approach to it as well. They're all Canadians I've noticed, which is kind of fun, but they're, they're nice enough. And he's up there too. He's around a million subscribers, but check out Chris Howe. Jared Pullen, uh, another name, uh, another guy I follow that really breaks down cameras. I mean, he does an entire hour some long video on every little setting in the Canon R5 basic setup, what you'd want to use and does an incredible job breaking down cameras and it's very straightforward. Last but not least, Matt, or who is Matt Johnson? Uh, he does a lot of wedding videography, but he also breaks down how to color grade those and really gives uh, good settings for your software when you want to upload them to either YouTube or IG or whatever it is you want to use. Uh, he's another fantastic person that gives great tutorials. My name is Matt Johnson, that is who that person is. Uh, that's not my name. My name is one only X-Ram or Chris or dude, whatever you want to do. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different, sort of like a Tech Tuesday, but I have no idea when I'm gonna upload this. It could be a Tuesday, who knows. But I wanted to show that it's definitely not overwhelming to have a camera like this Canon or the A7S III as a beginner and really start to utilize it. The way I look at it is a camera that I can grow into and the likelihood of me growing out of it or being dated in a sense that like I'm going, it's going to fall far behind where cameras are at is very low. I mean, there's still people that use old school cameras, DSLRs and stuff like that. This camera is gonna be solid for a while and I plan on keeping it for a very, very long time. With that, I hope you all have a good one. Come back, like this video, definitely subscribe because I haven't done much of anything in a while. A little couple more subscriptions would be nice. <laughs> but with that, you all have a good one. I'm out.